Hello guys welcome to the filmy explain. Today I'm going to explain a romance thriller film called Unfaithful. Let's start. Constance, affectionately called Connie, is bustling in her kitchen, washing dishes in her cozy and well-maintained home. Her son Charlie is sprawled on the floor, engrossed in a video game. When her husband Edward pokes his head in to say good morning, Connie teases him about his inside-out sweater. Edward playfully quips back that it was intentional. As Edward readies himself for work, Connie reminds Charlie to brush his teeth, to which he fibs that he already has. Seeing through his ruse, she firmly guides him to the bathroom to properly clean his teeth. Amidst the morning routine, Edward vents about a stock he was considering buying but ultimately didn't, which now seems to be performing well. Though mildly disappointed, he isn't angry, and Connie seems too occupied with her family duties to be bothered by the news. As Edward and Charlie head out the door, they take notice of a looming storm. Edward suggests Connie stay home, but she insists on running errands for Charlie's upcoming birthday. As Edward leaves for work, he playfully banter with Connie, who smiles and shakes her head. Their contented marriage and harmonious family life are evident in their comfortable and happy home. After successfully completing her shopping trip, Connie finds herself stranded in the city during a brutal storm. Despite her efforts to hail a taxi, none stop for her, leaving her with her arms full of bags that threaten to fly away in the howling wind. Unbeknownst to Connie, Paul Martel is leaving a nearby bookstore, carrying a towering stack of books in his arms. They collide in the midst of the chaos, and both are sent sprawling. As they pick up their scattered belongings, Connie asks Paul for help flagging down a cab, but they have no luck. Paul takes note of the cuts on Connie's knee from the fall and offers to retrieve a band-aid from his apartment, initially planning to wait outside. Connie ultimately agrees to go upstairs with him. Although the space is roomy, it's also packed with countless stacks of books, and Paul reveals that he's a book dealer. As Connie hurries to the bathroom to tend to her injury, Paul kindly prepares tea for both of them. In the bathroom, Connie fumbles a bit as she applies the band-aid to her knee, her nerves compounded by the fact that she's alone in a stranger's home. Back in the living room, Paul offers Connie a cup of tea, and they chat for a bit. Though their conversation isn't particularly meaningful, Connie can't help but be drawn to Paul's striking good looks. After calling her husband to let him know she'll be late, Connie feels the tension between her and Paul grow as he applies an ice pack to her injured knee. Though Connie tries to ignore his touch, she can't help but feel drawn to him. She eventually says goodbye, but not before Paul gives her a book and directs her to a specific passage to read. Back at home, Connie's family is excited and normal, but Edward is concerned about her injuries. When she tells him about Paul, he seems unconcerned and even suggests they send him some cheap wine as a thank you. That night, as Edward records her with a video camera, they flirt and soon the two are making out and having sex they are clearly happy and in love. The next morning, Connie wakes up feeling conflicted about what happened with Paul. She sends her son off to school and spends some time wandering aimlessly around the house. Eventually, she finds herself looking at the book Paul gave her and a small card falls out. She picks it up and reads it, considering her options. Later, Connie takes the train to Grand Central Station and heads straight for a bay of phone booths. She hesitates before calling the number on the card, but eventually decides to give in and call. When Paul answers, she makes an excuse about wanting to send him some wine as a thank you, but he suggests that she come and meet him instead. Initially, Connie is hesitant, but she eventually gives in and goes to Paul's apartment. The chemistry between them is undeniable, and they flirt as he helps her take off her jacket. When she spots a book written in Braille, he takes her hand and helps her read it. However, Connie quickly realizes what's happening and excuses herself, feeling guilty about the situation. Feeling the need to distract herself, Connie goes to visit Edward at work. She lies to him about where she's been and what she's been doing, but then tells him she bought him a new sweater. As he tries it on, he gets an important phone call and becomes completely absorbed in it, leaving Connie to watch on idly. Later that night she does the dishes as Edward packs up the table Connie's mind is elsewhere. Edward tries to get her attention, but she seems distant. As an excuse to leave, she offers to bring him some muffins and heads to Paul's apartment once again. There's music playing and he asks her to dance, which she reluctantly agrees to. As they hold each other, Paul tries to kiss her, but Connie pulls away and tearfully tells him that it's a mistake. She quickly leaves his apartment, but realizes she forgot her coat and returns to retrieve it. Paul grabs her and lifts her up, carrying her to the bedroom. Despite her initial resistance, Connie does not fight back as Paul undresses her and they have passionate sex. Connie is still visibly upset as she sits with Edward at home. It's unclear if she's upset about what happened with Paul, or if she's just lost in her thoughts. As she tries to compose herself, she excuses herself to the bathroom to clean herself up. Meanwhile, Edward has just finished work and is walking with his colleague Bob. He asks Bob about a meeting that Connie had told him about the previous week. But Bob seems confused and Edward assumes that he's just made a mistake. Later that night, Edward notices that Connie is acting awkwardly around him. 
He can tell that something is bothering her and asks her if she loves him. She assures him that she does. Connie lives a double life. One is a loving mother and adored wife, happy to spend time with her family, and the other with Paul, whom she sees more and more often. When they're together, she's clearly enamored with him, hypnotized by both him and the sex they have. Paul continues to push Connie's boundaries. One day, he takes her to a cafe for lunch, and she's nervous, not wanting to be seen. However, he continues to play with her, trying to test her limits. Soon, the two are laughing and kissing like no one's watching, but someone is. A random customer watches the two as if he knows Connie, but she doesn't see him. That night, Edward joins Connie in the bath, but when he tries to make love to her, she stops him and leaves, saying she isn't in the mood. Edward is clearly upset by this. The next morning, as Connie gets ready, Edward notices the new clothes she's bought. He tries to arrange to go to work with her, wanting to spend the morning together. But Connie lies and tells him that she has a beauty appointment she forgot about. Edward is suspicious and calls the beauty salon, confirming his suspicions that she never had an appointment. Connie is lying to him. As she heads to see Paul, Connie bumps into an old friend Tracy and an acquaintance Sally. Although Connie is desperate to see Paul, they convince her to come across the road for a coffee. She reluctantly agrees and calls Paul to tell him where she is. Paul decides to sneak over to the cafe for some fun. But while Paul and Connie are in the stall having sex, her friends are left waiting for their coffee. After Paul leaves and Connie joins her friends, the conversation turns to affairs. Tracy confesses to once having an affair, and she tells Connie it's the worst thing she's ever done. This strikes a chord with Connie, and she can't shake the feeling that what she's doing is wrong. Connie is plagued by guilt as she continues her affair with Paul. Meanwhile, at work, Edward is forced to fire a man who saw Connie with Paul in the cafe earlier and the man warns Edward to keep an eye on his own family. Distraught, Edward hires a private investigator to follow Connie. One night, Edward tells Connie and Charlie that he has to go to Chicago for a few days, and he speaks of trust, although it's clear he's referring to Connie. Connie and Paul go to the movies and end up making love in the theater, but as they exit, the private investigator takes photos of them. Later, Connie is late picking up her son, and this seems to hit her hard. She smokes and cries to herself and even calls Paul, looking like she might end the affair, but then she doesn't. Edward meets with the private investigator, who tells him about Connie's affair. Edward doesn't look surprised but appears as if he can't believe it. Next day, Connie, with the intent of ending things with Paul, goes into the city the next day. As she hurries to find cover from the rain, she spots Paul with another woman. She follows him into a bookstore and confronts him, shouting and yelling. Paul drags her to his apartment. And although she tries to end it then and there, soon the two are having intense sex in the hallway. Connie is addicted to Paul and can't control herself. Meanwhile, Edward goes to visit Paul, unsure of what he expects or wants, just that he has to see for himself. After Edward reveals who he is, Paul invites him inside, and the two have a drink. It appears that Edward is struggling to get his head around everything. And with each new revelation about the nature of Paul and Connie's relationship, he becomes even more broken. When Edward sees a snow globe that Connie gifted Paul, he loses it. Apparently, it was a gift from Edward to Connie, and where it at first looks as if Edward's going to collapse, he beats Paul over the head with the globe, killing him. Thinking quickly, he wipes down the fingerprints from the apartment, collects the globe, and begins to wrap Paul's body up in a bed sheet. Connie calls Paul the machine picks up but she tells him that they have to end it that guilt is killing her that she can't keep doing this to her family she sounds distraught and Edward almost looks as if he might forgive her right then. After Connie's call, Edward quickly stuffs Paul's body into the trunk of his car and rushes to his son's play. He sits with Connie as they watch their son, and for a brief moment, they seem like a happy family. Later that night, while Connie sleeps, Edward drives to a remote garbage site and dumps Paul's body. He then takes the car to a car wash and meticulously cleans it, trying to erase any evidence of what he's done. The morning after dumping Paul's body, Edward is acting strangely and his wife notices. He asks her if she wants to move back to the city, but she says she likes it where they are. Edward looks dazed but nods and agrees. Later, two police officers arrive at Connie's house to question her about Paul, who has been reported missing by his family, and Connie's number was found on his desk. Connie lies to the police, claiming that she barely knows him. As she lies, one of the officers plays with a snow globe, one of many owned by Connie and Edward. Connie tells Edward about the police visit when he returns home. After being questioned by the police again, Connie lies once more, acting as if she barely knew Paul and was surprised that the police even wanted to speak with her. Edward knows that she's lying but pretends to be alright with it. However, her lies begin to unravel as she claims to have only met Paul at a fundraiser, which Edward confirms. She then says again that she had never been anywhere near Paul's apartment. The police ask about the parking ticket. Connie is forced to hurriedly lie about why she was in the area. When the police leave, she looks upset and extremely worried. 
Later, while picking up Edward's coat from the dry cleaner, she looks through his pockets and finds photos of her and Paul together, taken by the private investigator. At a dinner party that night, one of the guests notices Connie's snow globe collection. As the guest looks over the collection, Connie notices that the globe she had given to Paul has returned. She looks at Edward, who looks back at her, and they both seem to realize what has happened and that the other knows. Connie confronts Edward, and in his rage, he admits to killing Paul. However, he also confesses that he didn't want to kill Paul, he wanted to kill Connie. This comment shocks them both, and slowly they start to pull away from each other. Feeling down, Connie talks to Charlie, who is upset with how sad she looks. Charlie then plays the piano with Edward while Connie looks over the snow globes. She finds a note from Edward from when he first gave her the snow globe. In the note, he tells her how much he loves her and how she's the best thing that ever happened to him. Connie feels remorse as she goes from reading the note to spending time with her husband and son. Bonding by the piano That night, Connie decides to burn the photos of her and Paul while reminiscing on all the times they spent together. Edward sits with her as she tells him that they're going to get through this one day at a time, and it looks like they might. They go to a party and try their best to forget. But on the way home, Connie suggests that they leave the country and start fresh, although Edward doesn't seem to agree. He plays along and muses about where they might live and what they might do, as long as they're together. The two hold each other lovingly, suggesting that no matter what happens in the future, they're in this together. Despite everything, perhaps their marriage is even stronger than it was before. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.